okay, which we have not done. Okay, so this is something right that, that that we will do next. So so estimating so right a depth by triangulation. Okay, and then that it does not decay, not the same as the stereo case, right? Where we had where we had you know baseline and all given and all. It right? is like R and T and right everything is sitting there, and we want to still be able to triangulate because it makes sense, right? I should be able to go back. I mean, why? How does it matter at at what? at what inclination both cameras are mutually right but then there should be a ray right which which should which where they should intersect if i do a do a back projection right and therefore okay what does it mainly use right it uses the fact so right so so this is actually a smart idea so uses the fact that and this is this is for for a, for a sparse set of correspondences right this we are not doing doing as i say dense correspondence and and also note that we are not doing this because we want to estimate the depth map okay please remember we are not doing this to estimate the depth map of the scene we are doing this to estimate a camera pose once we know the camera pose then we will actually pin it down pin down the dense reconstruction using using something called plane sweep stereo and so on which i will talk about later but this is not to compute the dense depth map and all this is even to know which camera con what is the camera configuration which rt to pick Okay, so you should remember that this is not depth by triangulation. Doesn't mean you are get, trying to get a whole scene depth map and all. You may not have that many correspondences. You have only a sparse set of correspondences that gives you a sense for which camera post to pick. Okay, now it uses the fact that the cross product of two vectors in the same same direction is zero, right? Two vectors in the same direction is zero. is 0 so what does it mean that means that right if i if i take actually the you know image coordinate which is like xy1 image coordinate which is like xy1 if that vector okay if i do a cross product with let's say i mean right i'm going to write this as uh, okay now oh no yeah so, so right this is for the this is for the first camera by the way okay for the first camera so if i do cross product with px tilde Right, PX tilde is basically right, any other any other point on this on that ray, right? This is on the same ray, and therefore because they are in the same direction, this cross product should be zero. So PX tilde this should be zero. What is the, what is the size of P? Three cross, three cross four. Size of X tilde four cross one. This guy three cross one. Right, and therefore, right if you take the if you take this cross product, it's another vector which is the this is zero vector. Or we can write this as uh, whatever right X tilde expressed in terms of the cross in terms of matrix form p x tilde right is equal to 0. Now for a corresponding point right, this is with respect to the let us say one of the cameras right left camera let us say for the right camera well if you want you can write this as p left or something p l or something for the right camera for and for the for the corresponding point okay this is not for any old point. Okay, because we know the correspondence, we know what is the what is the x tilde dash to which x tilde is mapping. For the corresponding point, what can you say? You can say that x tilde dash cross p dash, let's say whatever it or p r x tilde should be equal to zero, right? Or for that matter, x tilde dash expressed in matrix form, and then p dash x tilde right is equal to zero. Now, now you know if you if you see right, if you see uh, right, it might it might actually it might actually look like you've got four you say, independent equations. You know what I wanted to say was you might actually you might actually think that there are six linearly independent equations actually, right? Because because right, you've got kind of right, three equations coming from the first correspondence and three from the second. Okay, but but in but in reality there are only four four you say, linearly independent equations, and I'll show you why. Okay, so. Let us let us kind of right, go back to this condition where we had x tilde expressed as a matrix into p what is this uh, p x tilde it is equal to 0. Okay, now if you write this p as let us say you know as let us say p 1 p 2 p 3 where where each is a each is a 1 cross 4 row and because p is 3 cross 4 right. So, let us say p 1 is the first row p 2 is the second row p 3 is the p 3 is the p 3 is the see, third row then and of course right this guy is like x y 1 right 
x y 1. Then if you take actually a cross product right so the way I kind of try to remember is like L 1 L 2 L 3 right if you have uh, then what is what is the what is the what is the first term here right so it will be like L uh, so no it is L 2 L 3 L 1 I think. I mean, that's the order, right? I mean, you have to have some way to kind of say remember this. So it's like L two L uh, L two L three minus C M three M two. Right? That's the, that's the first first term, right? So if you guys can tell me, okay, then we can start writing here. Okay, so you have like y. Okay, uh, so L three is what? See P x tilde. So the first row, uh, sorry, for the, for the first entry of the P x tilde is what? P one transpose x tilde. This guy. This is actually a vector, no? This is like a three cross one vector, right? I am writing P as P1 transpose, P2 transpose, P3 transpose, I am multiplying it with x tilde. So, the first entry is what? P1 tilde, sorry, P1 transpose x tilde. Is that fine? P1 is tilde. No, no, P1 transpose, uh, okay, oh yeah, okay. No, well, I think uh, uh, P1, P1 is already the row, fine. Yeah, if you take, if you take, right, P1 to be the row, if you, if you say that P1 is a row of P1, then it is simply, then it is simply. Then it's simply P1. Okay, so so P1. I think you know the, the reason why they put the transpose is because just to make it explicit that there is a row column multiplication. Otherwise, you can get a little confused, right? You may think that how come, how come two vectors are getting multiplied to get a scalar. I think that's the reason. That's the reason why typically a transpose is used here. Okay. So anyway. Uh, okay. So so right. So just to make it clear, I'll write this as P1 transpose. Row is P1 transpose because normally it's better to keep the transpose in your head. Okay. Then you'll know that that's a number. Otherwise, you know, P1 into something it will be confusing. So, so each row is like P1 transpose, P2 transpose, P3 transpose. Okay, so you have like y P1 transpose x tilde. Okay, or I won't put a bracket and all. Y into P1 transpose x tilde. Then minus what is it? I mean, so I did uh, L, uh, so minus M2. So minus uh, M2 to M3, right? So M3 is one. Sorry, minus M2. Wait a minute. So what what is that? I mean, can can somebody tell me quickly? Okay. Anyway, I can write this down here. I have it. So you should be able to. Uh, this is nothing, right? There's there's no great uh, there's no great uh, theory here. So okay, the next entry is P1. Let's not waste time. I'll just write it down. X tilde minus X. You guys can just see verify that this is correct. X tilde. This is just just a cross product, right? So X P2 transpose X tilde minus Y P1 transpose X tilde. Okay. This is all this is all there is to it. Okay, and this you this you know is equal to some say 0, 0, 0, right. Now the point is okay. This uh, now you can show that you can show that right. I mean, even though it looks like there are three equations here, given just one correspondence, right? By the way, given this this one point, not even correspondence, one point back projected, you've got to see three equations. But you can show that right. You can show that you know you can multiply the first row, right? If you multiply the uh, multiply the first row by let us say minus x and you multiply this by you see minus y then you can then you can show see that addition of the two is, is actually the last row it is easy to see that right. See for example minus x if you do right then you get like x p 2 transpose x tilde which is sitting here and then minus x y you will get here but if you will multiply minus y here then there is minus x y and this plus x y will knock each other off and this minus y will go here and sit as minus p up minus y p 1 transpose x tilde which is the which is the second entry in the, in the, in the third row. Right. So, the third row is simply a linear combination of the first two. Okay. Therefore, you actually have only, only two linearly independent equations, but you will also have therefore, right, effectively only, only two linearly independent equations. Right. Minus x times first row plus minus y times second row gives you gives you the see, third row. And similarly, right, what will you have? You will also have similar set of equations for let us say y uh, whatever. Right. So, you will have x tilde dash no, for, the, for the other point. So, you will have like y dash p 1 dash transpose x tilde, but x tilde will not change okay. minus p 2 dash transpose x tilde, you will have p 1 dash transpose x tilde minus x dash p 3 dash transpose x tilde, x dash p 2 uh, p 2 dash transpose x tilde minus y dash p 1 dash transpose x tilde, hey, wait a minute uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you will have you will have a actually a p right, right? So you will have a you will have a p one dash, p two dash, p three dash, and again the the same thing holds. Right here also you can get the third one out of the out of the first two. Therefore, right, effectively, given a point correspondence, right, you've got like four equations. And here and here and here x tilde. If you put that as an unknown, it has only four entries in it, right? 
So, what you can do is so you can solve for x tilde as follows right you can do this as y uh, right I am going to I am going to I am going to rewrite this okay. I am going to write this as uh, okay, y p 3 transpose minus p 2 transpose p 1 transpose all this is coming from the okay from, from the way right from the way okay we have we actually multiplied things. So, you just stacking up now okay this is just uh, yeah, by the way the first one is y p 3 transpose okay this is not p 1 okay there is a mistake there y p 3 transpose second one is p 1 transpose x tilde minus x by x p 2 this is also p 3 okay that is why you are getting y p 3 transpose here minus p 2 transpose you got p 1 transpose minus what do you get x p 3 transpose it is all coming from here no from those equations directly then what will you have here y dash p 3 dash transpose minus uh, p 2 dash transpose and the last one will be x dash there is no there is no vector here okay this is just a number x dash p 2 dash transpose minus y dash p 1 dash transpose okay these are all vectors by the way p 1 p 2 these are all vectors ah. so I wrote the wrong one it should be this one it should be should be this guy p 1 dash transpose yeah thank you p 1 dash transpose minus x dash p 3 dash transpose yeah good good for the for being attentive right. So, minus x dash p 3 dash transpose right. So, you got you got my 4 equations now multiply this with what x tilde right and this should be equal to 0 okay. Now, uh, again right I mean how will you solve for this right S V D standard right S V D and then and then look for the one that has the look for that that uh, that Eigen vector which has the smallest Eigen value right. So, right do you see S V D and once you do this S V D then you have your x tilde now look at the z component and then see right if it is positive or not and and uh, and and this you can do for 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 see every camera configuration you have got 4 configurations right. So, this so this p will change accordingly right but as you came change your r and t your p will change and therefore, the p 1 p 2 p 3 are the only guys that are going to change x tilde and x tilde dash will not change that is the correspondence given already. The only thing that can change is p and therefore, you try for all 4 configurations of p and find out find out which one actually projects the points both the points in front of uh, projects a point in front of both the cameras is this, is this clear just a matter of doing triangulation sparse only to get the camera poses okay and and examine the z component of this guy right examine the z component of x tilde for its sign to choose the correct the correct camera camera configuration right ok. So, you will stop here I think I have exceeded I did not realize that ok. So, fine. So, so the, the other question right that you can ask is well uh, you know here I had an essential matrix which means that the intrinsics I knew right and therefore, I could come to the come to the essential matrix and I could do this. Now, a more complicated case is if you did not know the intrinsics at all and all that you have is a fundamental matrix right then can you kind of right do something. So, which is which is which will then uh, which is another question that is actually a pertinent question to ask uh, right we will we will see that in the I mean, next class which is actually tomorrow and uh, then we will also see what other ambiguities that can arise right the more the more freedom you give right the more you the more you kind of let this thing go loose right the, then uh, the more unstructured right can be the can be the depth map 